is that free will. Because God will allow you to bang your head up against a wall. If you, right? I mean, it, it, in the sense that when I'm talking about um, when I used to operate within my will, um, go down this track that wasn't in the flow, wasn't in, wasn't really listening to my intuition, or uh, it was just denying all this and operating by the world system. I went all the way, you know, and in most regards were very, very successful. Trappings of success, that is, yeah. uh, but very empty. Yeah. So, is that free will that you're talking about there? Choice, I mean, is that, um, in a sense, that battle within what we think we need and what we think we um, want to create versus really backing off of that ego, because that was all egoic. Call it bravado, it's not really brave. <laughs> it was just a, an appearance of, 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 of operating within the world and a choice to detach from that and really go within. Because when you're talking about like like who is the author of me and um, in those in, in those choices, you I mean there 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 is the will, right? The will is free will choice in that sense. Well, yeah, we have I, to look I, at those terms pretty closely because mm -hmm. that's one of the common uh, sayings that you hear is, well, God created us with free will. And it's true, God did give us free will, but it's not what we think it is. Okay. So, uh, when we have will associated with choice, then that's where the distortions come in. That, and that was one of the things that I used to wrestle with for, for many years, and I remember um, I was reading the clarification of terms in A Course in Miracles, and it said, um, yes, God created you with free will, and that there is no free will in this world. Uh, so I was like, oh, okay, let's look at that a little closer. No free will in this world. And then it said, God's will for you is perfect happiness. That made sense. It's like, if, if God was going to will something for me, I want to know what it is. Perfect happiness. Ooh, I like that perfect happiness. And then if you put together what I just said, that there's no free will in this world, there's no perfect happiness in this world. The good news is, once we forgive the world, we can come pretty close <laughs> yeah. to perfect happiness, but still, the world was like a cover or a denial of this free will, perfect happiness. So, we might say that in this world, even though there's no free will, the closest approximation of that idea of free will for perfect happiness in this world that's left, what do we have left here, is choice. So, basically the parameters of choice are basically whether we're going to align with our higher self, our intuitive self, uh, the Holy Spirit in Christian terms, or whether we're going to align up with the ego self, the imposter, the, the false self, you know, the lie. We can line up with one or the other. And basically, every moment, that's basically the range of our choice. Even though it seems like, on the projected world, that there are a menu of options. You know, I can choose where I want to live. I can choose to have a partner or to be single. I can choose to live in a house or a hut or on a boat. You know, and there seems to be a wide menu of choices in the dream world. But actually, that's part of a, a trick as well. Keep the mind using its power of choice among a bunch of images that aren't even real in the first place. So it's kind of a waste of choice. Uh, and a lot of us have, have, have pushed the envelope with that. Okay, I've got a little band of time here between birth and death, and I've got, I can choose whatever I want, so I'm going to choose, choose, choose. And then uh, sometimes we, we, we were just saying there's an emptiness, like a hole in us. We think, well, I've got to get good at choosing here. Maybe I just haven't got the right configuration. How's that one? How's that one? How's that one? You know, we try and try and try to get the right configuration of the images. And the reason it's so exhausting, frustrating, at times lonely, 
isolating, you know, depressing. depressing, on and on and on, is because we're still trying to use choice where it doesn't really have an application. It would be like, uh, you know, having a great tool but not having anything uh, worthwhile to use the tool with. You know, you know you're given a, a, sh a shovel to dig and you're on a concrete parking lot. <laughs> And it's like, damn, <laughs> the shelf was not working very well here. It doesn't have an application. Uh, and that's what happens when we, when we take choice and we try to apply it among the images. So, what he's saying, welcome, come on in. <coughs> what he says in the Course is, you can choose your state of mind. Any instant you, can, you have power of choice, you can choose your state of mind. You can choose the way that you look upon the world. You can choose your perception. You can choose which advisor you're going to listen to, the ego or the Holy Spirit. But that's your whole range right there. Your range is set between your higher self, your intuition, and this imposter self. And you're choosing between the higher self and the imposter self every single moment of every single day. And the range is set. Well, once you start to realize that, then you become less concerned about the pseudo-choices of the world, you know. Am I going to do this? Am I going to do that? In this world, those pseudo-choices can take on immense importance. Like, do I leave or do I stay? Ooh, big time choice. Do I leave or do I stay? It doesn't matter whether it's with a relationship, a job. Some of you maybe even felt that with Kalani. <laughs> Do I leave or do I stay? Or do I leave for a while and come back? Or, you know, but it seems to be like a, a big issue when actually that's another one of those. Do I leave my old life? Yeah. Leave my new life. Do I leave my old life? Do I reconfigure in a whole different way? Yeah. Do I strip everything away? Yeah. Do I go on Oprah and get do a, I go a with makeover? Do I I want a new life. <laughs> Can't so, you also view it as this positive thing? I mean, we, we focus on the negative ones, but what about choosing happiness? What about enjoying the decisions that you have to make? What about enjoying uh, making something beautiful? What are, you know, those are choices we have to make that are part of that ego world that can be fun and joyful, which is kind of what I think is, if you can get to those choices, why? Why we're playing this game, why we're in this movie, why we're... Yeah, well you mentioned the happiness choice. What it is, is, is the ego has, has invented a world where, you know, you can search for happiness in those decisions, but just like Jesus taught, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. The ego's version of its plan of salvation is seek and do not find. So, so what happens is, we all, of course we try. I mean, all of us have tried those, and I tried them, and I'm sure everyone has. You, we try for that happiness. We think, well, I'm going to go for this, and this looks like it will make me happy. And maybe it will uh, in a temporary way. I mean, uh, I think a lot of us, when we've got the job that we've dreamed of, maybe since we were a little child, we dream of a particular position, and we finally work hard at it, and we attain it. And, and there's like a, a high, there's a happiness that seems to come with that, that lasts for a while. Uh, it, it usually doesn't last for a long while, I mean it lasts some, for some people longer than others, but there's a, a bit of like, okay, what's next? Kind of like, I've, I've got to that goal, I've achieved it, but I haven't find a, found a lasting happiness or a lasting contentment. So, and the reason there's no lasting contentment in the ego's plan is because the ego doesn't know what happiness is. You know, like we've heard, you know, the truth is within you, the kingdom of heaven is within you. It's just covered over by all these false concepts and pursuits. So, yeah, I tell people, when people say to me, you know, they say, I really think I can find it in the choices of this world. And, and it's like, well, you're free to try as many as you like. There's no one lording over you and saying, don't do that. It's like through this seeking and not finding that the mind seems to come into a state of disillusionment. Like it tries it in many ways. I think that can even happen with manifesting, uh, where you seem to use the power of your mind to manifest, but you can manifest so many different things, and, and you have what the world would call abundance in so many ways on its terms, 
and there's still this little splinter of like dissatisfaction, discontent. discontent. Even with all of that great manifesting, you know, it's still it's still there. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're saying that 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 just drives you even more quickly to this idea that that it can't really be found in the decisions of the images or the decisions of the world, but there is a higher choice that's available. We could call it uh, enlightenment or or self-realization, self-actualization. Abraham Maslow said when you get the survival needs met and the emotional needs, you work your way up to more like being needs. And there's this deeper uh, choice that will, will satisfy. And we talked about it last night a little bit. We call it forgiveness, but not forgiveness in the typical terms. Forgiving what somebody did to you or what you did to somebody else. But more just, aha! Escape from a misperception, like whoa, I had it. I had. I was mistaken about all of it, not just what their reaction was or what this sequence of events was or this one thing, but actually, wow, I was really mistaken about all of it. I was mistaken about the way that it was set up. Uh, we could say that would be a, a what's behind the setup. You know, seeing. Thank God, I was mistaken about the setup. So. So it, once you start to realize that, that the range is set between true happiness and uh, upset, which could be sadness or anger, depression, envy, jealousy, you know, shame, guilt, upset can take many forms, irritation even. Uh, the range is set between irritation and love, happiness, peace and joy, between annoyance and love, happiness, peace and joy, that there is just two thought systems that you're dealing with and life becomes a lesson in discernment. Which advisor am I listening to? Uh, which choice am I making right now is really what it, what it boils down to.